What is good? We are back for one more installment of Not in the Same Room FF Dynasty. How you doing, Jay Wayne? Still married to the game. You know? Still married to the game. Andy. How are you? How are you? I'm doing well again here in my in my cell and with the brick and the white. Um, I, I have my prison shoes on, but you can't see them. So uh, I thought you were going to go shirtless, man. Uh, you're really oh, disappointing I mean, me. It's a little warm in this room here because it's, it's not the most air conditioned part of my house. And I am zero air conditioning. Right now I'm uh, renovating, uh, putting a pretty soon going to have to move out of here. So ripping the roof off. So and you're not moving into my house. Like what? A I'm, I am not moving into your house. Uh, maybe at some point I may, but not right now. I mean, anyhow, I don't know why you wouldn't move in here, man. Like, what? <laughs> we'll see what happens over here. Got We're, toys. Your kids love it. Your kids loved it over here. <laughs> All right. So we just did beer uh, stocked fr- in the fridge. Like, a little bit of injury talk, recapping some some Dobbins, some ETN, some Acres, talking about all those guys, what to do in Dynasty, what to do in redraft, a lot of different scenarios. Uh, we also talked about, you know, if 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 you've ever just wanted to thrive, uh, you know, if you're if you want to thrive, you could who go doesn't want to thrive? You want to hit that app store. And we've partnered up with these guys and, and you go to Thrive Fantasy and download that app. Um, it's going to download little, that app. It's going to be a player prop app. So you could kind of like a little daily fantasy action. They gave us a read. We'll get into all that later, but we just wanted to get get it out there, get the words out there. Um, so basically, you're going to get uh, you're going to choose 10 out of the 20 available player props to build your lineup. These are all the top tier guys. Uh, it's nothing. No, you know, I'm not talking about Josh Reynolds over here. We're going to be talking about Julio Jones. Um and then it's basically going to be like a tournament where for, you know, the more difficult props that you pick and the different ones that you play, you get point values assigned to them. And, you know, at the end of the day, just like fantasy, whoever has the most points wins. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of different values that you can buy in at, uh, whether it's a couple bucks or 10 or 20 or 100. And right now, the biggest thing they're doing is a $20 entry. Uh, first place takes a home 20K. Um, so 100K. That's, oh, first place. Yeah. 20k uh, and they've awarded the, uh, over four million dollars in her in prizes already they're over there doing some work so we got a promo code for you it's the ffd all caps um all one word so go hit them up go ahead and they'll match uh any deposit you'll receive 100 percent instant first match deposit up to 100 dollars. so you can it's 100 free dollars right go ahead and throw that in there it's thrivefantasy.com or you can go to the app store or the play store and go ahead and get that. I've got it. I'm playing around on it. I'll be playing uh, this season on it, having a lot of fun. It's just, you know, not on the DFS level, but, you know, who doesn't love betting on player props? It's a good time. It's, it's fun, and it's hard to hit on one. So if you can give me, like, a little team of player props. Right. You know? And and now you're getting points per player prop if you if you hit the over-under correctly. Uh, so a lot of fun. Uh, go check that out. The FFD, help your boys out. Show them that we sent you. Uh, you give us a couple miles. D, we'll FFD. take you a couple miles. We'll give you a couple miles. You give us a couple miles. Does it have to be all caps? I think so. Just hit the all caps. Just make sure it's all caps. Hit the all caps. One word. The FFD. The FFD. That's what it is. Married to the game. All right. Let's get into some of these cuts. Going to keep it kind of brief and short here. Going to try to get in and out under like 10 minutes here. After Thrive just took up like two. Yeah, we gave Thrive way too much Jeez. run there. All right, so the biggest one right off the rip is Cameron Newton getting cut. Um, it's not because he wasn't vaxxed, but it's not not because he wasn't vaxxed. Right. Was it was in the wink and a nod. It's all about availability is your best ability, and he wasn't available, and, you know, they, they, they just ripped the Can't be fucking up COVID off. tests, man. You got to do the, the team test. That's, yeah. What are you doing, Cam? So they ripped that Band-Aid off, and it probably has a positive outcome on most of the team. This is a good offensive line. Positive, not a great word during this time, during (laughs) COVID. But there is a rookie, so you don't know how much uh, BB will really take the reins off. Still probably going to be a little bit more geared towards the running game. (laughs) BB? You you didn't like the BB? (laughs) I didn't hate it. Um, But... You know, definitely helps probably the PPR value for the running backs. Definitely helps out probably the PPR value for Hunter Henry. 
a, a good deep ball thrower in Mac Jones. So probably could help out the, the Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar's of the world and probably the John Nuke who's, you know, could have some splash plays thrown in there, but we just did that injury video. I can't believe we left out the most important, significant injury of this off season and kill Harry's on IR. Like, yeah. Oh man. What a, what a bummer. What an outlier. JK. that guy is. I mean, he is on IR, but what an outlier. That. Yeah. <laughs> what an outlier that guy is. That's um, hilarious. So a- personally, you know, we all we all like running quarterbacks and what they can help do for running backs, open up some lanes. But we thought we were on the uh, dynasty. But they also zone. steal goal line targets. Exactly. We talked Jerry's. a little bit about this with Memphis and and Jerry Sinclair over there. So go ahead and check out Dynasty Warzone. Good yeah, they podcast. had us on last night. Shout out to y'all boys. Appreciate it. Had a lot of fun. Um, but I think again helps the PPR stock and then doesn't get those touchdown vulturing Cam Newton call number ones. Uh, rip, rip your heart out after did Harris took you all the way down the field. And then number one calls his own number and runs in. Cause he's got like 77 r- career rushing touchdowns, which is more than like with Danny and Tomlinson or something, you know, a c- bunch of crazy. You got it handed to cam. The only dude who can rush for 77 rushing touchdowns and wear a babushka. Like, yeah, what a stud, but so you lose the threat of the dual quarterback, right? He stresses the defense. It opens up lanes for the running back, but it also takes away goal line carries. And Cam wasn't a checker downer. Mm-hmm. He wasn't checking it down. Mac will check it down, and they like to do that shit. So I think yeah, it is. And Ben, uh, Bill's definitely going to be in his ear to check it down. And uh, hey, don't, just don't fuck this up. BB. Just, he's over there just like, just don't fuck this up. Just don't <laughs> fuck it up, Mac. <laughs> All right, so stock up probably. I think it's maybe stock up New England Arby's? running backs. Yeah. I think so, too. And maybe I think all around. I think it's stock up all around, even though I, I thought Packers. Cam was going to – I thought it was going to be a fun team to watch, grind it out. Uh, Cam could probably do some fun things, but it'll be – I think it's stock up a little bit, everybody over there, even though it is a rookie. So – uh, let's, let's keep it moving here. Uh, who else got cut? Oh, Wayne Gallman, little ah. Wayne train got cut. That was a, didn't poor, see that coming Poor went out from him. He'll find work. Don't feel bad for Wayne. Just sad that he wasn't in San Fran. Maybe, maybe he comes back. He wasn't one of the resign, but I could see him finding a job in Atlanta, finding a job in Baltimore. Um, somebody's going to need his call. services. He, he will probably get claimed here before we even release. So don't just show. go. If you have a deep, if you have a deep dynasty team, don't just release him for some other guy who, who got, he, he'll probably find a team. And, and if Wayne, if the Wayne trains getting run, he can, we've seen last year where he can produce a little bit. So I'm, I'm fine with that. But what this really does is makes me super excited for Elijah Mitchell. Elijah. Um, the six round Elijah. pick who we Mitchell. Been really, really high on, um, obviously they drafted Trey Sermon high and they have Mostert and Jeffrey Wilson will come back, but those are the three guys, Mostert Sermon and Mitchell are the three guys right now on that depth chart and, and hasty, uh, will mix in a little bit, but I've, the fact that Mitchell screwed up in that last preseason game and he's had multiple times, multiple times field, he screwed up, right. And then they, they ended up sticking with him. I think it just shows you what they see in him and how, how dynamic he can be for them. Huge um, vote of confidence for Elijah because Wayne not only is a, has a track record of being a solid NFL running back, led the Giants in rushing last year, and he played well in the preseason, and he fits into the scheme because he can catch and run. And for them to let him go is such a huge vote of confidence. Yeah, I, I, Mitchell. and you know they they've been high on him throughout camp there was times in the beginning of preseason where you know the beat writers and, and the people around the 49ers organization were basically saying Mitchell was was looking like the third rounder and and Sherman was looking like the sixth rounder so I was hyped up we didn't get to see him all but he had a little abductor issue so we didn't get to see him until this preseason game but when he wasn't out there fucking up he was looking pretty good you know, running quick, hitting holes, being decisive, truck to dude. Um, so a lot to be enjoyed out of the late round uh, magic of Elijah Mitchell. We've been hot and heavy on him. Got him on every team. Uh, so let's go with Elijah Mitchell. That's a, even though we like Wayne, nice cut for Elijah Mitchell's vote of confidence. I like that. Um, All right. Let's take it to another cut. Tyron Johnson got cut. 
So, you know, had, had some some flashes uh, last year. He'll end up probably somewhere else. But what this does is is it opens up some more opportunity for for Josh Palmer over there. Uh, Josh so. Palmer Henderson. Surprise pick in the draft a little bit by a lot of guys. I feel like you really had to go then familiarize yourself with with Josh Palmer. If you did early drafts, there was probably really good value on Palmer. He was all pretty stuck good. at Tennessee, right? Right. And just, just buried just, behind poor quarterback play. It, well, and isn't overly athletic. Nothing blows you off the off the charts there. But, you know, he's going to seemingly have a role in that offense. And then again, stock up to my guy, uh, old Don Parham over there. He gets a little confidence boost, less mouths to feed, maybe a little double tight end action. And, and he's a big six, eight, super athletic tight end that I have on every single team. Uh, scooped him up late last year. So big, big, big proponent of him and great, great for Josh Palmer here to, to get some early run on the uh, <laughs> get some early run in the uh, in the what we're expecting to be a pretty dynamic offense with the Chargers. All right. You want to take it to the Raiders, the Raiders, the Raiders cut John Brown or he has to be released, whatever. It's one of the sparrows embarrassment, kind of like Cam probably also said, hey, I'm not going to be the backup so you guys could just you know, release me. Uh, cause I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be this guy. I'm not going to get the vax. Just go ahead and release me. <laughs> My light fell <laughs> down again and it's, I can't reach it. So we're going on lit for uh, the rest of the podcast here. 100. Um, so they, they pick up John Brown or they, they release John Brown. So gotta be decent stock up for all the pass catchers around there. Be uh, right. And Henry, you know, we, we know Waller is going to be the hundred target guy, most likely in that offense. Um, but I, I'm expecting Brian Edwards to have a bigger, they need to have some other fucking receivers around here. And Aguilar had a pretty good season with them last year. And Brian Edwards is, is certainly S- a strong season, solid season, right? A, a, Quite probably solid. A, a better caliber receiver than, than Aguilar is slated to be. And then Henry Ruggs, uh, just the more dynamic player, which, probably would have been a little bit more in a John Brown role. So maybe that best uh, affects. Yeah. A Henry Ruggs there, but I think, you know, a little more, a little more space for everyone without John Brown around. Love it. Love it. Grab scoop. Those dudes are cheap. Scoop them. Yeah. I'm, I've been, I've been feelers out for Brian, Brian Edwards and in, in every That's chance B-Rye. I can get. Old um, B-Rye. And of course, always Waller. Um, Waller Xavier Jones got cut on an injury settlement with the uh, Rams there. So they obviously traded for Sony Michelle. Um, you know, he just got the, the resuscitated got life breathed back into him. If you had him on a dynasty roster, I have one uh, where I've got a really good team. Uh, so I don't necessarily need him. Do you think this is, are you, you riding this into the season to try to figure out what you can get. Cause I don't think anybody's really super dying to get Sony off your team, but he is on the Rams. So, you know, that's always a positive. What would you, what would the most or least that you would take? You just taking anything you can to get Sony. And, and now that he's got a little life into him, are you going to, what are you, what are you doing? I go fishing. Like, I mean, you can't expect a ton. How often do you just get to shoe someone like that in your life? It's just do you ever do that to someone? You just would you do a two three swap if you could trade Sony for <laughs> a two and get a three back? Hundred percent. Let me get a two. Yeah, if I could get Sony attached to a two, that's yeah. For Sony sure. and two. I don't trade think you're gonna get that. Maybe you, maybe you trade him to the Henderson owner. You know, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you're gonna get that. Would you trade him for a three? At this point, like Not next just, year, but like maybe you're in a rookie draft this year and there's someone on the board you like you Josh know? Palmer's available at three, two, three, one. Would you trade Sony to, to scoop up Palmer? I Nico trade Collins. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fu- f- uh, fuck Josh Palmer at that point. Let me get like, I mean, Nico or, or uh, like a little Kyle and Hill, maybe ooh, ooh, ooh. you could trade. You might be able to get a little more than that. If I get more. And Sony for Kylan or Elijah, you know, if I get like them in a third or something, absolutely. Yeah. Let me let me cash Elijah out. Moore, on, Elijah cash Mitchell out. Or, or right. Kyle and I say more. Third? I definitely meant Mitchell. If I said more, yeah. Obviously, I said you can't more. Get more with with Sony, but uh, I mean, I would, but I don't think you can do that. But I I uh, would be willing to definitely try and cash out on Sony right now. I don't think I have any. Sony, yeah, so. I think it probably depends on how your team's rolling, but I got a really good team. So if I don't get 
maybe exactly what I want. I could see the value of spike and who, I mean, you can look at it two ways. You got value, breathe back into him. So take it and re-roll it into something else. Just take what you can get or see if he can have a little roll, carve something out and make somebody interested so that maybe you could figure out a way to squeeze a two out of him. Mm -hmm. Probably not, but. Let me get something. Um, see you, right. Sony. Sorry, Sony, but I got to get rid of you. Yeah. So Patriots. Cornell Powell, you. cut. Your boy. Clemson Go guy. Tigers. Big Co's probably more sad than you. Uh, For sure. <laughs> yeah, he really uh, attached his rope to the, to the uh, anybody that gets drafted by the Chiefs. That's what Big Co wants, but it doesn't. doesn't so he's out of there, but out. stock up Pringle, baby. Stock up to Marcus Robinson. Uh and Michael Hardman, just one less mouth to maybe take some snap. Not that we were worried about it. I've, we've been, I've been a big proponent of buying some Michael this year. Right. Um, but, you know. No, so Casey, there's no one that gets any cheaper after their first year in the league, Casey. You can't just yeah. wait on a guy and buy him cheaper. Well, good. The, you can't, there are, they're not any good. So that's. Uh, last night on the War Zone, they did a segment called Good Person, Bad Tweet. That's bad person, bad tweet right there. <laughs> We'll have to find that tweet and, and put it on video and we'll talk about it later. You can't trade uh, a guy later for less. Well, it's kind of a stupid fucking statement is that shit. Yeah, you well, you can't you can't buy a guy later for less. Trade four guys. That, yeah. I don't know yeah. yeah. Right. That's which is you a garbage trade him for less. Garbage statement. Absolute trash. Bad person. Um, <laughs> Des Fitzpatrick cut. So a bit of a little bit of a shocker there. They traded up for Des Fitzpatrick. Not a whole lot of receiving depth that I really know of on the Titans. They did that so, before they brought in Julio, though. They did, but I mean, still, I mean, Josh Reynolds, but, baby. Josh, yeah, I Josh mean, Reynolds drop. You know, yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, deep, deep, deep stash for deep leagues for Josh, Josh Reynolds. I mean, who knows? I mean, Julio, Julio could catch his, and Julio, Julio could catch his charge. I don't know. <laughs> Well, he is dealing marijuana on the black market. That seems to be getting allegedly under the reg, but allegedly he's being allegedly. sued. So that means it's it's like Wikipedia. It's definitely true. Um, All right. Well, those were some of the bigger cuts. Um, obviously, you know, we talked about some injury action. Uh, carry on Johnson had been cut earlier and then they just released Jordan Howard in Philly. So really just Miles Sanders Good uh, there and, and man. Kenny Boston Gainwell. Scott and Kenny Gainwell and, and Miles Sanders being the biggest bodied out of those backs. I mean, I maybe just got a, a plus, a, maybe a little bit more goal line work for him. Although Gainwell does seem capable at the goal line and I don't have a whole lot of faith in Boston Scott necessarily. I think it's going to be a, a Gainwell Sanders one, two punch with a little spell of, uh, Scott, but I mean, that's it's not the worst when less guys uh, are around. So I don't know if Kenny Gainwell is taking any goal line carries away from Miles Sanders. But, man, if you haven't gotten some Kenny Gainwell in your life, you're missing out because he is looking electric. And they're the new Kenny G. Him up, they're just lining him up all over the place. He's on the field with the other running back like he it's just. I was like a little hesitant because I was like, what's the best I can get out of him? Like 10 points a game. I don't know. I, don't, I feel much better than that now. Like after watching him play and run around and you made the point that this was the man keeping Antonio Gibson off the field at Memphis. And like, that was just a marvelous statement. Yeah. It was like it's oh, not the be wow. all end all people get that wrong sometimes. And you know, justice Hill was, well, they Chris obviously Carson weren't off the field. Memphis didn't know what the fuck they had in Antonio Gibson. He only touched the ball 73 times in his entire career. Yeah. So they were, but, they were fucking it up, but I mean, they just produced him and Kenny Gainwell. And I think I've just, I just, be, after I fucked up on Pollard, I've just, I'm not going to fuck up with any of these crazy skill guys that come out of Memphis. Cause whatever they're doing and whoever they're recruiting and who's ever in charge of shit down there, they're getting it right. Figured they're getting it out. these, they're, they're getting these extremely athletic, electric dudes. Obviously, he's not the same size as Antonio Gibson, but Gainwell can do so much. Sirianni seems like a guy who wants that kind of player who they can move around and, and throw the ball to and shit. I mean, at the end of the day, them boys kept Arthega Whiteside as a receiver on the on the Eagles, didn't cut his ass. So, I mean, Kenny Gainwell is leaps and bounds better at playing receiver than Arthega Whiteside is and probably hey, hey. better... JJ made a good play. He made a play that finally looked resembled something that he did in college. He went up and right. took it over a dude and then busted a tackle he and did. took he it into did. the end zone. And he, he celebrated did, like mean, he didn't get selected before DK Metcalf. 
<laughs> just not a whole lot of receiver depth over there with Rager with being a question mark of uh, we hope he can pan out. We know we're, we're, we're pretty confident in in us uh, and and Devonta over there. Yeah, I'm but down to get some Devonte Smith. If Gainwell could easily that, mix man. in as the third receiver over there, and and yeah, have he's just doing so much running back role. He's just so cheap. He's he's so cheap for what you're gonna get out of him, and then there is a ceiling there that I wasn't maybe aware of initially that I'm more into now. And after watching him play, and he just he just looks so shifty and fast, and he and you're lining him up in the slot and out wide, and running around. So this is my RB, right? So get him in the right system, get him schemed right, and he could be a very good player. And I think they're 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 really intrigued. They they got a steal on him when they got him in the draft. Yeah, I don't know how this turned into a Kenny Gainwell end to the show, but I'm here for it. Kenny Gainwell all day. Let's go. I'm Way like better it. than J.D. McKissick. He's about to thrive. Oh, yeah. Thrive Fantasy. Check that out. App out. All the caps. The code. FFD. The FFD. Help your boys out. Tell them that we sent you. That lets them know. Uh, we, we give us a couple of miles. We get a couple of miles. You scratch our back. We scratch yours. You get a little uh, match bonus if you if you use that promo code. So go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, we'll be back with, with more information on the Thrive and a real read, but we wanted to get it out there and uh, start promoting that. They gave us graphics and all this stuff. I'm going to ask for a T-shirt because, I mean, come on, let me get a shirt. Let me get some swag, dog. Hopefully it's as comfortable as our T-shirt, which I'm, I'm, working with, I'm working with the Revelry, our other sponsor, to try and get that T-shirt up on the website so you guys can purchase it. Uh, that's, that's also in the works. Uh, trying to solidify that down so y'all boys can get our, our fresh T and be able to have a whole new plethora of, of maybe some new designs. He's got big plans. I got some good ones in the world. He wants to get one of those white tees with the logo across it. That's going to get dirty and turn into a yellow tee. You know, I'm all, Oh, I love, I'm, I live that. I love that white tee life. I can't buy a white t-shirt. I mean, nothing cleaner, nothing cleaner. I got to wear it as an undershirt. Okay, and then eventually it's not gonna be white anymore. I gotta get rid of it. It's like gotta ah, mop I hate up white that shirt. Gotta mop up that tit sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it's more for the end of arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, when I first moved here from up north, I used to wear a white tee under just about everything. That's yeah, just what we did. And then I moved down here, and I was like, "This is fucking gotta go." He can't wear two t-shirts out in this bitch. Yeah, I rarely wear the white tees so, that I have because I know if I wear them, they're just gonna get worn out. But I love I, I, if if I have an option to buy a white tee with some sort of a design on it, a couple of stripes or or some something, I'm mean, I'm all in. There's nothing crispier or cleaner than the white than the white tee. Just dirty. fresh out there. And you, You're an adult. I'm a, just don't I'm, eat spaghetti. I'm a slob. I always end up with something on me, man. I'm a slob dark. too. So I just don't. I just don't decide to eat when I have like spaghetti. When I have a white. Oh shirt no, on. I uh, I I have my white tee on. I can't eat. Yeah, I'm not wearing white T-shirts to a spaghetti dinner. It's not happening. You don't know that you're going to a spaghetti dinner. You're, yeah, I pretty much I've, de- I've decided that when I'm, you know, the spaghetti dinner is not just an impromptu thing. It's a whole deal. Spaghetti usually ha- like it's like you're hanging out with a friend like, oh, do you want to come over for dinner? We're having spaghetti. You know, like, oh, sure. I'm hungry and we're hanging out. You know, you don't know. Yeah, oh, but I'm not going to be wearing my, on. I'm I not going to be, be wearing that white shirt. You got a you got a spare tea I can borrow. <laughs> I mean, I, I was probably at home when I got invited. Hey, the funny my my uh, my sister in law her kid. Anytime they're like, "Hey, Josie, you want you want to eat? We're having spaghetti." She's like, "Oh yeah." And she just like takes her. She immediately takes her shirt off. <laughs> she knows she's got to get her shirt off to eat spaghetti. That's 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 you, Casey. Your child. my mom. Your my mom old. has uh, a spaghetti shirt for for my daughter at her house. So when they go over there and she has spaghetti, they she's got a, a spaghetti tank shirtless with a bib. That's what you got to do with these kids and the spaghettis. Like, no, it's just, it's the same thing. Basically, it's basically a bib, but it's just a shirt. So anyway, let's get out of here. Let's get the thrive on, on. <laughs> thrive on, thrive on, thrive on Jay Wayne, and thrive on. That's too, that's gotta be some too sort close of- to, you know, copyright infringement. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys, we'll check you next time. We'll be back for uh, one more live mock, and uh, then then it'll be in season, and we'll be thriving. Appreciate y'all.